Well, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome uh, the President and the Secretary General uh, to uh, the Troll A platform. Welcome you to Norway. This is a central part of uh, Norway and it illustrates the energy partnership and security partnership between Norway and Europe in these very demanding times. During this year we've had intense cooperation and contact between the European Commission and Norway. This is the first visit by a Commission President since 2011 to Norway and we appreciate to see her here. Norway has been able to increase gas supplies to Europe uh, during this year and it's our ambition to be able to hold that high level for the next four to five years. So we are between 30 and 40 percent of Europe's deliveries. This platform in itself provides 10 percent of Europe's gas consumption, just to highlight the dimensions. This is also, of course, about security. And I would salute the Commission presidents for having so strongly contributed to European unity in face of the Russian attack war on Ukraine and the Secretary General also for keeping NATO allies so solidly, solidly together. And one Norwegian contribution to this unity for democracy and freedom is that we maintain our level as a secure energy provider. And let me also add that this energy effort is also about speeding up the energy transition. So we have been working very closely with the Commission to venture into offshore wind, hydrogen, the new energy sources. And in a few years from this platform, you may be observing offshore windmills producing renewable energy for our economy and for the European economy. I would also like to highlight that the German Chancellor and I took an initiative to ask NATO to be coordinating uh, security uh, initiatives for our energy installations. Norway has about 90 offshore installations, 8,000 kilometers of uh, pipelines, and it is a very good sign that NATO can take a responsibility in co coordinating our efforts to secure that security with industry and with governments. So both of you, close friends, you are heartily welcome to Troll. This is a part of Norway. Madam President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Jonas, thank you very much for the invitation. It's the very first time in my life that I am on a gas rig, so it's amazing. It's really exciting. And indeed, um, Norway has been an incredibly precious partner and friend uh, to the European Union, um, mainly in the last 12 months, uh, while uh, we saw this atrocious war that Russia unleashed against Ukraine. Putin tried to blackmail the European Union by cutting us off a Russian gas supply 80% an equivalent of 100 billion cubic meter of, ga cubic meter of gas that Putin has um, stopped going to the European Union. And in that time, we needed friends and like-minded partners to step up, and that's what Norway did. Norway increased its production and helped us in a critical time. Um, it increased the production from 78 billion cubic meter to 90 billion cubic meter, and uh, this really helped us through the winter. We're grateful for that and we're very happy to hear that in the years to come we will uh, maintain this high level of support. But of course our friendship and partnership is much, much broader uh, than only uh, natural gas. Uh, indeed, we are working on um, a green alliance. The green alliance, that's basically the Champions League. We, the European Union, have only one green alliance so far with Japan and now Norway will be the first country in Europe to have a green alliance with the European Union. We're working uh, on decarbonization. Uh, we're working indeed on uh, hydrogen, green hydrogen. We're interested in uh, carbon capture and storage. Of course, here in Norway, you are champions what offshore wind and wind onshore also is concerned. You have the wind and you have the technology. So everything is open uh, to create this green alliance. I'm very much looking forward to do that. My third point is on security. Indeed, um, the last month taught us how important it is to protect our critical infrastructure. 
And here, Jens, uh, I'm very grateful that together with NATO, the European Union created a task force. We had the very first meeting of this task force to, for the protection of the critical infrastructure yesterday. What is the principle? Um, the European Union and NATO both have a very clear view on the threat theater and an assessment on the situation, but we come from different angles. And therefore, if we join forces, we have a broader view. And of course, we are also able to find more solutions to protect our critical infrastructure. So in sum, it's great to be here among friends and thank you for the excellent cooperation. Jens, it's thank over to you. Thank you. First of all, uh, CEO Anders Oppedal, it's uh, a great pleasure to be at this uh, platform again. And uh, I'm glad to be here together with uh, uh, Prime Minister Jonas Gahr Støre and together with President Ursula von der Leyen. These structures are really impressive. And uh, we all know that they uh, help to heat uh, homes uh, and uh, power industry across uh, Europe. So therefore, uh, gas installations like uh, the Troll platform is... Uh, vital for our economies, for our industries, but also therefore for our security. Because we have seen um, uh, how President Putin has uh, tried to use energy as a weapon uh, throughout uh, the war uh, against uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, Norwegian Gas has helped to um, respond to that and ensure that uh, President Putin failed in his attempt uh, to uh, uh, use energy as uh, a weapon. Um, since these structures are so vital, they are also vulnerable. And uh, NATO has addressed uh, the security of uh, offshore installations of undersea infrastructure for many years. But now we have stepped up, not least because of the initiative taken by Prime Minister Støre and Chancellor Scholz uh, some months ago uh, to uh, give NATO uh, a more um, uh, a stronger role in uh, the efforts of making sure that this vital infrastructure is uh, safe and uh, secure. So I thank uh, Jonas Garstøre for the initiative. Uh, this has really led to some concrete action within the alliance. Then we also stepped our cooperation with the European Union. And as uh, President uh, Ursula von der Leyen just mentioned, uh, NATO and the European Union the, uh, has established, or we have established, a. Uh, uh, a joint task force. They met for the first time yesterday and we are now stepping up the concrete cooperation with the European Union to complement and to work closer together to ensure um, critical undersea infrastructure and offshore, offshore uh, installations like uh, uh, this, uh, um, this uh, platform. Uh, NATO has also increased its presence with more uh, military capabilities uh, in the North Sea, in the, in the Baltic Sea and also uh, elsewhere. And uh, as we speak, there is a Norwegian Coast Guard over there. There is a Norwegian helicopter in the air. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, there, is a, there is a German uh, ship back uh, behind. And uh, you just saw a, a maritime patrol aircraft. And this is part of NATO's standing maritime group with uh, ships and, uh, and planes from many different na NATO nations, uh, demonstrating how NATO allies stand together in uh, in protecting this uh, vital uh, infrastructure. So in a more uh, dangerous world, in a more unpredictable world, it's even more important that we stand together and ensure uh, these kinds of extremely important uh, infrastructure for uh, our economies, uh, for our daily life, and also for our security. So thank you so much again, uh, Ursula, Jonas, and Anders. Yeah, there you move. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, uh, Secretary General and Prime Minister. Thank you very much for uh, visiting the Troll A platform. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to, to welcome you uh, you're here. Um, and uh, this really underlines the, the importance of the uh, energy uh, cooperation between Norway and uh, also EU and Europe. Uh, the troll field that we are today, as uh, the Prime Minister said, can produce 10% of Europe's consumption uh, every day. And we plan to produce gas from this installation beyond 2050. 
But as the Prime Minister said, in addition to securing gas to Europe, this area uh, will possibly also uh, produce uh, uh, electrons from offshore wind. And just a few kilometers from here, next year, we will start storing CO2 that we will actually pick up from ships uh, in Europe and bring uh, to uh, the, uh, close to the troll field and then pump it down safely in the ground. So this area will be an important area you know, in the cooperation between Europe and Norway also for many, many uh, decades. Equinor, we are uh, dedicated to a balanced energy transition and we will continue developing the energy Norway and uh, Europe will need uh, for decades. So thank you again for visiting us. It's a really a pleasure to having all of you here with us here today. Thank you. We have a question to uh, both Secretary General and the Commission President. Um, you spoke about um, how important this critical infrastructure is. Where do you see the main vulnerabilities? How big do you see the threat specifically from Russia to this critical infrastructure? And then second of all, how much more important has this become, especially to the European Union, now that most European Union member states are off Russian gas and, and turning more towards uh, uh, gas from Norway? Well, maybe I can also, first of all, this infrastructure is extremely important, it's vital, but that makes it also vulnerable, uh, not uh, least because of the sheer size. We speak about thousands of kilometers of pipelines, uh, gas and oil, but also uh, uh, other kinds of internet cable, power cables, so in totality this is an enormous amount of infrastructure. Meaning that of course we cannot protect every meter of this infrastructure at, a, uh, at every time. But what we do is that we have stepped up what we do when it comes to exchanging uh, intelligence information, more closely monitoring uh, uh, the infrastructure. Then uh, we have increased our presence with more military uh, capabilities. And then the plan is also now to exercise more, to be able to react fast if uh, something happens. One thing which is illustrated by the task force we have established and the, and the, and the enhanced uh, uh, vigilance NATO allies are now showing when it comes to protecting critical undersea infrastructure is that we work more closely with the private sector, companies like Equinor. And Equinor and, uh, and the CEO actually went or came to the NATO headquarters, briefed the North Atlantic Council, because we know that the private companies, they have key capabilities which are essential for the protection of this uh, infrastructure. When it comes to importance of the European Union, I'll leave that to, <laughs> to Ursula. Yes, thank yeah. you. Indeed, um, critical infrastructure is of uh, critical importance to all of us. And um, we have decided to start together with the EU-NATO Joint Task Force uh, to protect the critical infrastructure, to look at our vulnerabilities. Um, for example, at uh, vulnerabilities in the energy sector or the transport sector, but also digital and space is important. Uh, it is, first of all, about having a mutual awareness about what the threats are, uh, a common analysis about the strengths and the weaknesses, and then to develop the, together a different solution for better protection. And as I said, as we have different angles at which we look, with which we look at uh, different theaters, Joining forces, of course, widens our possibilities to protect our critical infrastructure. And this infrastructure here, speaking of Norway and uh, the importance for the European Union, it is of high importance. So um, we have seen how cri critical and crucial it was for the European Union to make it through the winter that Norway stepped up its production. Um, and this was, of course, through this infrastructure that is in place. So we were in a clear crisis and we were able to react rapidly and um, actively to this crisis thanks to this critical infrastructure. And then the last question is NRK. My question is regarding the prices of gas and oil, especially gas, which uh, has led to uh, a lot of discomfort around Europe. What do you see Norway's role uh, in lowering these prices, keeping them acceptably low? Have you had any talks with uh, Prime Minister uh, about this question? So first of all, why have uh, the prices skyrocketed? This was not a normal market anymore. This was a manipulated market um, and uh, lots of speculation in. Because when the prices last summer exploded, this was because President Putin took off 100 billion cubic meters of gas of the global market. And of course, this tightened enormously the market. This was a strategic decision 
of President Putin and this was not a normal market reaction. The moment we acted in unity, the European Union with friends and allies, to diversify away from Russia, to compensate, prices went down. This is point number one. So, um, point number two, we are just tabling as European Union an electricity market reform and we have created a joint energy platform to make it possible for our suppliers to have the aggregated demand of the European Union, for example, for Norway to join this platform as a supplier. Um, and the aim is um, not only to have uh, the spot market, but to look at long-term contracts that are beneficial for both sides. And with that, we have the consumer at the core of our action, um, and this is what brings us together. Yeah, let me say that Norway is served by stable prices. We don't set prices for gas, and these volatile high prices is not in Norway's interest. Directly for Norway, because gas prices drive electricity prices, which are very high for Norwegian consumers, and that, that's a burden on them and on industry. Secondly, it's not good for our partners in Europe. They are our allies and our trading partners. So uh, one contribution has been to increase our export, has contributed to bringing prices down. And I, I, I take note of the fact that the companies operating on the shelf are in close contact with the European partners on more long-term agreements, following very closely what happens on the purchasing side. Uh, and we've had political contact uh, on this also between the Commission and the Norwegian government to see what we can do to contribute to more stability. Prices have come down, but as the President said, it is basically because there is now more energy coming in. And that's what we have to see to, that we now can also push in more renewable energy to help stabilize the markets.